Hi, I'm Scott Schutz. I'm the Associate Director of IT for PECI. When I came to PECI about four years ago, our data center operations looked a lot different. Uh, we had a lot of open cabinets. We had a standard uh, crack unit that was going 24 by 7. Um, all of our servers were standard servers with localized storage, uh, no virtualization, no storage consolidation or anything like that. Um, the infrastructure itself was pretty inefficient. Um, the room itself had leaks in it, so although we were brute force cooling the room, we were also brute force cooling the drop ceiling and other parts of our infrastructure as well. And um, just in general, it, was, it wasn't the most uh, efficient uh, scenario in the world by any means, and it's actually very common though in the type of environment we were in at the time, which is leased office space in a building uh, distributed across several floors as the company grew over a period of time. After a period of substantial growth, we realized we could no longer maintain our operations with the current facilities. So we went out on a search in the Portland area to find a new space for PECI. And um, this was a chance to build new, to use some of the examples out there in the wild of energy efficiency measures that were successful and um, really broke the mold on how data centers are typically built and operated, especially in the small to medium size uh, market. So. Uh, we set some criteria for ourselves. Uh, first off, we had to support this, uh, the substantial growth we had been uh, sustained over the last several years. And this means that we wanted this to survive another 10 years. Uh, we wanted to minimize the um, amount it cost to actually build and maintain the infrastructure. Um, and uh, we were looking to use ambient conditions for cooling. Uh, we wanted to reduce, again, the amount of infrastructure that was necessary to keep the data center um, operating at, 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 at normal production levels. Um, another thing that we wanted to do was use common infrastructure, uh, things that are mostly off the shelf, with the idea that this is a proof of concept um, that is reproducible by others, with the message being that you can do this too. Initially during our search, uh, we looked at several buildings, but I was actually hoping for uh, one of the older buildings in the Portland area. Uh, my main purpose in this was um, I wanted access to outside air. Um, and that means uh, sometimes making modifications to uh, a building's exterior. And um, with some of the newer buildings, that's a little bit more difficult. Um, as it turned out, we, um, we ended up moving into a lead platinum building uh, that is completely sealed, and which eliminated my ability to actually um, either be on the outside of the building or even to um, have any access to outside air. So um, what initially looked like uh, a problem um, actually turned out to be an opportunity uh, to solve um, a common issue that others are going to run into into office space where they don't have control over these circumstances. When approaching the design of the new space, we kept four main elements in mind. One was to reduce the number of heat generating devices, thus reducing a requirement for cooling. Second was effective airflow management techniques. Third was raising the set point temperature of the space uh, to 85 degrees above the normal 68 to 70 degrees that you see in most spaces. With the idea that we would raise that further over time as we prove this concept out. And fourth was to use ambient conditions. Our approach to reducing the number of heat generating devices um, in our space consisted mainly of server virtualization, um, replacing our older, less efficient servers with newer, more energy efficient servers, and storage consolidation. So taking all of that orphaned or siloed storage that was spread out among multiple servers, bringing it into one central place, and then using it more efficiently through things like uh, thin provisioning, uh, data deduplication, and uh, compression. Our approach to airflow management consisted of some basic elements. Things like blanking panels that fill the spaces between servers, forcing the air to actually go through the servers versus around them. We also use chimney cabinets for our hot air containment. And the chimney cabinets actually take that return air, pipe it out into some return air ducts that go out of the room, keeping our supply air and our return air from mixing. Finally, we incorporated some switch manifolds for our data switches. These manifolds take the normal airflow of a switch, which is side to side, and, and channels it so that it's front to back like the servers. Again, keeping our hot air and our cold air from mixing. 
Once we put airflow management measures in place, we were able to raise our cooling set point to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. In our old environment, we ran at the more traditional 68 degrees. And the space now operates in a range between 73 to 84 degrees Fahrenheit, typically. We found that this hasn't increased any failure rates or anything like that in our equipment. Everything runs just fine. And um, the AC itself only kicks in on the, the warmer, during the warmer months of the year when the building um, AC is shut down on the weekends. One of our original goals that was really important to us was to use ambient conditions. And our original hope was to build on the exterior of a building and access outside air. Uh, that wasn't an option. Instead, um, our server space was built on the core of the building. But that's okay. Uh, we found a creative way around what seemed to be a problem. What we're doing is we're using the return air from the office space itself that's going through the plenum. And we're using that as a supply air for the server room. And in return, we're taking that return air from the server room, which is now even warmer or hotter. And being on the building core, we're able to make use of that to help the building warm the retail space on the first floor during the cooler months of the year. But we also use it to preheat our hot water for all of our office space. So with all the changes that we made and with our approach to energy management, all that's great, but ultimately what's what's important is results. And so far for us, uh, the results have been operating at about a sixth of the energy that we would have without these measures that we implemented, and about a fifth of the space as far as our footprint for equipment is concerned, with no loss of performance and no downtime. And that's saying a lot. Using our existing data center expertise, along with lessons learned from building our own energy efficient data center, we're piloting data center energy efficiency programs at PECI. The key takeaways here are that using common systems, what we've done here is reproducible. That was our original intent. And by doing so, we're able to bring real world experience and data to our clients and to data center operators. These savings and benefits aren't theoretical, they're, they're real, and they're proven to work right here in our own data center space. <laughs>